we are done with the membrane bound organelles in the animal cells. We saw, and if you remember, membrane bound organelles are just basically organelles within the cell that have their own membrane. Uh, for this lesson over here, we are going to be looking at non membrane bound organelles. These are some of the structures within the cell that do not have any membranes whatsoever, yet they are also able to carry out specific functions. So without wasting any time, we are going to be looking at the ribosome. Structure-wise, what we have to know about the ribosome is, the ribosome is made out of something called rRNA, which is a type of nucleic acid, and we will be looking at that in Chapter 6, so there will be no reason for you to memorize this yet, and they are also made out of certain types of proteins. What happens is when this rRNA, nucleic acids, and proteins join together, they form a clump or a cluster, which is known as the ribosome. The ribosome itself is made up of two subunits. The ribosome itself is made up of two subunits, a large subunit and a small subunit, and the size of the ribosome is about 23 nanometers to 25 nanometers. So this will give you a clue that the ribosome itself is not visible under the light microscope, because if you remember, light microscope has a maximum resolution of 200 nanometers. We've been through this before, so anything smaller than 200 nanometers, you're not going to be able to see it. So if you want to be able to see a ribosome, you need to be using an electron microscope. You can see that the ribosome itself is made up of the larger and smaller subunit. Together, they form one ribosome. The next organelle that we are talking about is the centrosome. Now, a lot of times students get a little bit confused with this because when you talk about centrosome, many different things come together. Uh, sometimes you might see the word centriole, sometimes you might see the word microtubules over there, and it's always used interchangeably in the book, which makes students extremely confused. So let's talk about this. The centrosome itself is basically known as the MTOC, also referred to as the microtubule organizing center. So there are a few things that we're going to have to break down over here. Okay, so let's talk about this. The centrosome itself, as a structure within the cell, it consists of several parts. It is two cylindrical microtubules perpendicular to each other. And these two cylindrical structures are referred to as something called centrioles. And after drawing out the centriole, we can actually see that there are certain little, there are certain tiny little filaments which are radiating outwards from the centriole. And those purple colored things radiating out of the centrioles are referred to as microtubules. So together, the centrioles and the microtubules form something known as the centrosome. So the centrosome, long story short, is made up of two things. The centrosome is made up of centrioles and also microtubules. And the centrosome is usually found beside the nucleus of the animal cell. A lot of times students ask the question, so what exactly do the centrosomes do? I've simplified the diagram there for you. And the function of the centrosome can be to, well, to break and reassemble microtubules. Then comes the question, what do the microtubules do? Number one, they act as a cytoskeleton. If you imagine the human body, the human body actually needs bones to support itself. Without bones, you'll just basically be a bag of flesh and skin with no shape to your body. So to maintain the shape of a cell, for example, an animal cell, it will also need to have its own internal support system. And that internal support system is the cytoskeleton. And as you can see in the diagram that I'm drawing over there, the purple color lines is just basically the microtubules radiating within the cell. It's radiating within the cell to give the cell a kind of shape and a kind of support so that the cell can maintain its spherical shape or whatever shape an animal cell can be. If you also, if you are aware, the red blood cell that I'm also drawing over there, it has a biconcave shape. Now, how do you think that biconcave shape is being maintained within the cell? It's because red blood cells have special types of cytoskeleton to maintain the shape of that cell within the cytoplasm. 
So you see, that's one of the main functions of the cytoskeleton. It also forms spindle fibers during mitosis and meiosis. We are going to see this in chapter 5, so you don't have to worry about that yet. Just be aware, if you're writing down notes, just put it over here, and then also just put a kind of a, a, a star or a note to just say that we are going to look at this again in chapter 5. And I will be sending a reminder when we are covering the mitotic cell cycle. And the third function of these uh, and the third function of the microtubules is it's the pathway of vesicles to be transported within the cell. You see, our cell is just a kind of place where a lot of vesicles are being transported from one part of the cell to another part of the cell within the cytoplasm. So the microtubule, which is the purple line, forms a kind of highway for the vesicles to latch onto. And when the vesicles latch onto the microtubules, they know where to move within the cytoplasm. If there were no microtubules within the cell, the cell will collapse because it would have no support system. It will not be able to undergo mitosis or meiosis because it would ha not have spindle fibers and vesicles would not have been able to be transported within the cell because the vesicles use them as a kind of pathway. The other things that we are also going to be talking about in the animal cell are things known as cilia and microvilli. Cilia themselves are just microtubules, yes, that protrude out from cell surface membrane. Cell surface membrane meaning the membrane covering the surface of the cell. It's in the name. And microtubules are connected to a basal body, which looks a little bit like a centriole. And I'm just drawing it over there. So as you can see, the peach color line represents the cell surface membrane. It separates the cytoplasm from outside the cell. You can see a cylindrical structure forming the basal body, which is connected to a microtubule. That microtubule over there is the cilia. And what does that cilia do? That cilia just basically waves around. There can be many functions, especially in your trachea, in your airway, you have a lot of these types of cilia, these types of specialized microtubules, so that they can move mucus upwards, especially if you have too much mucus in your airway. So they remove the mucus from our body. We can also have cilia, certain types of cells may have cilia for movements, okay? Like for example, paramecium, which is a type of unicellular organisms. It will actually have cilia beating to produce a rhythmic type movement. And of course, for this microtubule to move, it actually needs ATP to be able to function. Microvilli, however, is the protrusion of the cell surface membrane or the extension or projection of the cell surface membrane where it comes outwards. The, per the main purpose of microvilli is not for movement, but the main purpose of microvilli is to increase the total surface area for absorption. So cilia basically produces a type of movement. Microvilli is just there to increase surface area for absorption. They are two different things. 